I decided I needed to redeem myself from the less than incredible makeup I've been doing on this channel recently. I really appreciate all the support you guys give me all the time, but as you probably very well know, the hardest person to impress is always yourself. Today, Miss Nisa Nisi Pisa the third, consider yourself impressed. Yeah, I did that. This is actually pretty misleading. This entire look, let me zoom you in, this entire eye look was done with none other than Miss Betch herself. First name, Icy. Oh wait, no, that's a complete lie. The lighter blue, that's like the most eye-catching thing, was done with the Remix Natural from Tarte. But the rest of it was Icy Betch. So, where is this palette going? In the underwear drawer. Also, if anyone's wondering, let's just get all this out of the way for anybody who's new. Pisces Sun, Taurus Moon, Scorpio Rising, Slytherin, ENFJ. So if you, like me, are someone who is very enthusiastically in love with makeup and cosmetics and gooey, sparkly, pretty things to just smear all over your face, you might have run into some trouble with feeling way too tempted to buy makeup all the time and to hold on to makeup you don't need and to just unnecessarily funnel money into makeup and sort of let it consume your life and your finances. I've definitely done that, not even just with makeup. Recently, I have discovered a few ways that I've been able to sort of rewire myself to not feel so damningly tempted to buy makeup all the time. I don't necessarily like going on no buys or low buys. I just sort of like to control myself all the time, which sounds super condescending when I say that, but I don't like to have to set aside a period of time to like control myself. I wanna just be able to do that always, you know? And so I've developed or discovered a couple of things that have helped me do that that I would like to share with you. Not all of these things are things that I thought of. In fact, many of them have been said many times by many different people. Pretty much all of this is me taking tips that other people have given out and sort of talking about how I've been able to apply them to my own life. In fact, this entire video itself was inspired by a YouTuber that's been getting recommended to me for the past like three days, Whitney Hedrick. I will link her channel in the description. What got recommended to me was this amazing pair of videos that she made called How to Stop Buying So Much Makeup. She really gives it to you straight and I really like that. I really respect what she has to say. I started just sort of jotting down my own feelings about like some of the things that she was saying, some of the things, the things she was saying reminded me of and I wound up with kind of a sizable list of things so for internet purposes I'm going to call it 10 ways to curb your makeup spending <laughs> or no what's better 10 ways to be a smarter makeup consumer. Oh, is that a thumbnail? Hold on. Perfect. Let's begin by talking about how to use the makeup you already own to prevent yourself from feeling tempted to buy more of it. Marie Kondo has the perfect attitude towards this, which is you need to be able to see your stuff in order to use it. I don't know why it took me so long to realize the issue with me and the reason I wasn't using my eyeshadow palettes and the reason I felt so guilty about buying more of them and receiving more of them in PR when I was barely wearing eyeshadow was because I was storing my eyeshadow palettes stacked on top of each other in a knockoff Ikea Alex drawer that I bought off of Amazon. So if I wanted to use an eyeshadow palette, I would have to sort of awkwardly reach down to the bottom of this drawer set and shuffle through the palettes and clang them into each other to find one, which is frankly, quite foolish. If you want to use your eyeshadow palette specifically more, store them in a way where you can see all of them at once. Just get a full snapshot of your collection. The way I store my eyeshadow palettes now is stacked next to each other like books on a bookshelf. My desk is right in front of a windowsill. So I have all the palettes right there, their bindings smiling up at me when I sit down at my vanity after my shower. And I can be like, which one would I like to use one shade from because I'm already late for work today? Pluck. Ah. And then, you know, I'm actually using the things that I've poured my money and time into. If you are able to see what you have, you're able to know what you have. Therefore, you're able to sort of cultivate a running inventory of your collection. So when you're scrolling through Instagram and you see Trend Mood or Hot Fire Makeup or Indie Mood or whatever makeup account you follow, even though you probably shouldn't if you have an issue with overspending on makeup. And that's just a little bonus step. You're like, okay, so this palette has a green, a blue, a yellow, and 17 browns. I wonder where I can find a green, a blue, a yellow, and 17 browns. Oh, in this palette I have, this palette I have, this palette I have, and 
look at that. This palette I have. I make videos about new makeup releases, so I see a whole heck of a lot of them, and I'd be like, ooh, this palette has like such a fun silver. It's like, girl, you know what else has a fun silver? You. You have a whole bunch, but you're not aware of it because you're never actually delving deep into your palette collection, because it will be a huge freaking hassle to do so because of the aforementioned digging and clanging in the drawers. Now that I can see all my makeup, I don't feel as tempted to buy like whatever ColourPop is coming out with because here's actually, on that note, here's an example. ColourPop and Midas Cosmetics both just came out with yellow monochromatic palettes. I eventually decided that if I were going to buy one of them, it would be the Midas Cosmetics Lemonade palette. The reason I keep saying if I were going to buy one is because I'm not planning on buying one because I know I have a yellow in my Midas Cosmetics Honeycomb palette. I have a yellow single from ColourPop in the shade Take Flight. I have a yellow single from Kiko in the shade 19. I have a couple of yellows in my BH Cosmetics Take Me Back to Brazil palette. I have a bright, phenomenal yellow in my September Rose Cosmetics Slush palette. Oh, you know, I do have another yellow. I have <laughs> a matte yellow in my Tarte Let It Rainbow palette. All those gosh darn yellows! And that's not even touching how many gold eyeshadows I already have, my dude. So like, because I know that, because I'm constantly having sort of like FaceTime and I almost said finger time. That's not good, don't like that. But because I'm having so much like tactile time and I can actually see my palettes, I'm aware of what I have and I'm not as tempted by new things because I know I have that six times over already. And this is something that works even if you have a smaller collection than I do, which you probably should have a smaller collection than I do. That's a conversation for a different day. Point of it is not how many eyeshadow palettes you have or don't have. The point of it is knowing what you have regardless of what that actual volume is, okay? Like what I alluded to before, and this is a tip that Whitney had in her video. If you feel like you are overspending, and even if you're not actually spending, feeling like torturously tempted to purchase makeup all the time, and it's because you are watching influencers who are doing tons and tons of first impressions videos or Instagram posts, you're following trend mood, you're following makeup updates accounts, pay attention to how they're making you feel. If they're making you feel excited and a little bit tempted, I would say that's okay. Cause that's how I feel when I look at those accounts too. I also look at them for research purposes because like I said, I make videos about releases in the beauty community. Ah. But if it's not making you feel excited and it's making you feel down about your actual collection or it's making you feel like you need to whip out your credit card and drive your car into an Ulta, you might wanna go ahead and uh, smash the unfollow button for a period of time. Maybe until you're a little bit happier with your collection or the temptation cools down a little bit because feelings change over time. That's a life hack for you. Emotions are mutable. An offshoot of that first tip is regardless of how you store your makeup, get into your eyeshadow collection, get into your singles. Make sure you're aware of what you actually have. Cause sometimes things get away from you. Sometimes I go through my drawers and I'm like, when did I buy this ColourPop Jelly Mud shadow? That shouldn't be happening. I should be aware of when I'm acquiring things. And so should you. That's not just for makeup. I have to make a point to go through my entire wardrobe like once every two months or so. Put on some music, put on Good As Hell by Lizzo specifically, put on Lizzo's entire catalog, a shrine to Lizzo, sacrifice a virgin for Lizzo, and then put on all of your clothes and be like, do I look like a bad bitch in this? Is it hot? Am I proud to serve it? If Nori, bring it to someplace you can donate clothes, my guy. If you don't like how you look in it, get rid. I can't do that right now. I pared down, even though I just said that I have a issue with shopping with clothes too much. I moved like a month ago and I don't think I realized how ham, cheese, and turkey I went on decluttering my clothes. I don't got no freaking clothes right now, my dude. Call me the emperor because I have no clothes. My mom would like that joke. I should text it to her. She watches my videos, Never mind. I don't need to text it to her. Hey, mommy. My mom and I talk on the phone every Saturday and she'll be like, so I saw your video and I'm like, oh frick, am I grounded even though I'm 25? No, it was cute. I liked when you said, I liked when you had the wig on. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I know you probably love your mom, but like, do you love your mom as much as I love my mom? Surface says no. Number two, let's talk a little bit about the divide between how you like to use palettes for eye look. This video is pretty palette talk heavy at the beginning, but that's because eyeshadow palettes, I find, at least in my experience, can be some of the most expensive makeup items. They can be some of the ones that cause the most regret, the most buyer's remorse, and they can be the ones that contribute the most to clutter and feelings of guilt because of lack of use. And they can be the hardest to store, which contributes to that whole, if you can't actually see your makeup, you're not going to use it type of thing. But anyway, how do you prefer to do eyeshadow? Do you like to take out one palette that has 
all the colors you're going to need for that look and just use that one palette? Or do you like to have 15 palettes out at once because you need this brown from this palette and this silver from this palette? And both of those things are valid, but there are pros and cons to each that I'm going to talk about right now. I if you're wondering, am the latter. I don't mind having my entire desk strewn with four different eyeshadow palettes. If you are like my friend Hannah, AKA Smokey Glow, AKA super famous binge who just got recognized by Shane Dawson. <laughs> I'm not jealous at all. If she eat, everybody gon' eat. Hannah, you trying to collab or like, what? I love coattails. Um, Hannah is the type of person who likes to have one eyeshadow palette out with all of the shades she's gonna need for a look. Here's why I tend to shy away from that. Just dragging Hannah, just instantly, just like, here's why Smoky Glow is problematic. Needing to have an eyeshadow palette be entirely cohesive for a look means you're going to need to have one eyeshadow palette for every kind of look you want to do, which can lead to you purchasing more eyeshadow than is actually necessary. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just different. It's just using more things. Whereas with me, you would think my way is also using more things, but I'm using different parts and pieces pieces of the palettes I already own. However, the hidden insidious danger of doing things that way, pulling from like five different palettes for one look, is it makes decluttering things really difficult. So you wind up having sort of a pack rat mentality when you do things my way. And you're like, well, I can't get rid of this one palette because I used this one silver in there two years ago. That's when depotting comes in handy, but you can't depot everything. You have to figure out what works the best for you. There are definitely pros and cons to each approach. I just wanted to bring that up as something you might not have considered. How the way you use your eyeshadow palettes can impact both your buying habits and your decluttering habits. Also take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my observed and also lived experience. You might have a completely different experience to what I said and that's a-okay my dudes. Number three, don't buy backups. You heard me. Even if you use something every day, I don't like the term holy grail for stuff like that. Things that you really, really like that are like really pretty are holy grails. Things that you use so often that it's the same reflex as breathing, that's like a lifeblood product. For me, that's my brow gel, my NYX Control Free Clear brow gel. I wear it every day, I don't think about it, but I don't buy backups of it either. Unless you are absolutely certain it's getting discontinued, and even then you might as well just put your energy into finding a good dupe because you're going to have to do that anyway at some point. It just leads to excess clutter in your collection. Yes, you are eventually going to use it, but was there any difference between buying it now and you still have like a couple weeks or even months worth of the product or just buying it later when you actually need it, you know? Just like how you should only eat when you're hungry, you should only buy backups when you actually need them. Number four is a super tried and true rule that I did not think of, like I said in the intro of this video. Goddamn if it ain't the God's honest truth. If something is on sale and you have never heard of it, you've never even considered wanting it for yourself, don't do it. Don't do it. You just want it because it's another thing and it's fun to get a bunch of things. I get it. I know. We all are like little birds. We all like little sparkly, shiny things. And on the note of just sort of tossing stuff into your cart for the hell of it, number five. Don't overspend just to hit free shipping. This is something I have learned both the hard way and the soft way. Sometimes this actually works for me. It always results in me spending more money than I need to. If shipping is $5.99 and that extra thing you threw into your cart to get free shipping was $24.99, you're not saving money, sis. And when I say sis, I mean me, because I still do this a lot when I'm shopping for clothes. It's not good. This is why places like ColourPop are so dangerous. I've explained this before. ColourPop's free shipping shipping price, I think it's like $5, at least within the US, which is where I live. That's like the same price as an average item from ColourPop. So it's really, really easy to be on ColourPop, about to check out and rationalize to yourself, let me just throw in another lipstick or another super shock shadow or another jelly much whomstever so I don't have to pay for shipping. It's like, girly, you probably already have all the things you actually want in your cart already. Just like tossing another thing is just, it's, it's clutter. It's, it's clutter. It's fun clutter, but clutter all the same. Number six. Oh god damn, number six is long as hell. I can't read it like this. This whole thing that I wrote. Get familiar, real familiar, with how much actual vital things in your life that you need cost 
in comparison to makeup that you might want to buy. What do you want to do with that $40? Put it towards an eyeshadow palette or put it towards a week's worth of groceries? For me, a single person, when I used to buy groceries on my own before I lived with a roommate, it would cost about $40 each time, which is $160 in a month. You know what is almost $160? The price of one Natasha Denona palette. Do you know how many sesame snacks from Trader Joe's that is? Do you want to put this $30 towards two lipsticks or this month's electric? bill. Do you want to put this $129 or $100 or what have you towards this Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath or Vise Art palette that you're probably going to feel too guilty to use with any sense of regularity? Perhaps, you know. Or do you want to put it towards getting a really good pair of boots that you're going to be able to wear for years? Am I telling you to constantly guilt trip yourself and deny yourself joy? Yes. Of course not. I'm just advising you and myself to be aware of the things in your life that that money that you put into makeup, especially big purchases, might be better used for. And also, I don't even wanna qualify that as just big purchases. If you're buying like $15 worth of drugstore makeup every time you go into Walmart or Target or CVS or Rite Aid, that adds up, my guy. Especially if you're like me and you're a complete goblin about it and you're like, I deserve a present for walking down one block to CVS to buy toilet paper. I'm gonna buy eight Number seven, learn to recognize when things are just goofy expensive. Not expensive for you, not expensive for Sephora, just expensive in general. Here's an anecdote. When I was around 21, I was a senior in college and I was just starting to watch beauty videos with some regularity. I started following a lot more makeup centric blogs on Tumblr and somebody posted this beautiful photo of a nude colored lip gloss. And through some sleuthing, I found out that it was the Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss in the shade High Society. I was like, that's the most beautiful nude lipstick I've ever seen in my life. If I bought it, I would wear every single one and I would maybe finally get someone to kiss me at this godforsaken college. If wishes were horses, you know? Birthdays would be really weird. Anyway, I almost took the Metro North train into New York City and went to Bergdorf Goodman so I could fawn at it because this was before Charlotte Tilbury was carried at Sephora. The thing that stopped me from buying it was the fact that this lip gloss was $22. And I was like, I can't rationalize spending $22 on a lip gloss. That was when I was 21. Right now I'm 20 frickin' five. And guess what? Do you know what this is? This is a full size, full priced, buxom lip gloss. This was like 21 bucks. I didn't buy this with a gift card. I bought this with my credit card, my credit card. What happened to her? What happened to little 21 year old Nisa who despite not having the correct perspective on anything else going on in her life, trust me, had the wherewithal and foresight and wisdom and sense and sensibility to not spend $22 on a lip gloss. Where'd she go? Cause I don't see her. I paid full price for that lip gloss and I didn't even flinch. Do you know how frightening that is? That's why videos like this are helpful for me to watch. Giving myself wisdom that I already kind of have but I'm just ignoring it. Number eight is a great way to get rid of makeup that you don't want anymore. You might disagree with it, but I'm gross and I love being just a, a slovenly little piggy. So it's great for me. Swap makeup with your friends. Have a little party out of it. Everybody brings their makeup they don't want to somebody's place. If you can't donate your makeup, you gotta get rid of it somehow. And if you don't wanna throw it away and you can't return it, what other option do you have? I guess you do have another other option, which is to do some crafts with it. Get all Frankenstein-y and surgical. Crush up those powders, put them together and see what color they make. I will make a video on Franken makeup at a point, but it's very, very easy to crush up things and mash them together again. Number nine is about influencer collabs and brands. Oh boy. It's a pretty simple concept. They're gonna be fine, sis. They don't need your money. You need your money. That's why your job gives it to you and not to Jacqueline Hill or Jeffree Star, Kristen Dominique or Kylie Jenner or Rihanna. You don't have to buy it just because you happen to like the millionaire who owns the brand selling it or who worked in collaboration with another brand owned by a millionaire to make it. You don't need to give them your money just because of that. There are a lot of ways to support your fave. Here's a couple of real life examples from my own psyche. I deeply love Rihanna. I do, she's a Pisces queen. I love her a lot. Her music is great. We love Rihanna in this household. I only own two products from Fenty Beauty and I'm not really that interested in getting any more until they came out with a darker shade of the gloss bomb. <laughs> well, we already know that. I mean, I'm not even that interested in that to be quite honest, because I don't love the formula of the gloss bomb, but I feel like I've complained about it so much that if I don't buy it, if it actually happens, everybody will 
cancel me. On that note, just complete tangent about the Fenty Gloss Bomb. If you're new here, it's a bit of a meme on my channel that I don't like Fenty's Gloss Bomb and I wish that the Fenty Glow was a little bit darker because it's a little bit too frosty for my natural look color. And I've been begging for Fenty to release a slightly darker shade of the Gloss Bomb for like a year at this point and they only release lighter colors of it. Alongside with ColourPop's monochromatic yellow palette has been like the thing I have requested kind of the most from brands. And you guys are very diligent and you pay attention to what I say and you know that. So when ColourPop announced their monochromatic yellow palette, I think I got tagged in it across Discord and Twitter and Instagram easily over 150 times over the course of like two days. If, no, not if, when Fenty comes out with an actual perfect for me nude shade of the Gloss Bomb, you don't have to at me. You don't have to tell me because I will know. I will sense a disturbance in the force. I will bolt awake in the middle of the night the second it becomes available. And I will astral project into Sephora and just subsume all of them into my person before T-posing and vanishing like I've just been Thanos snapped. That will happen, I promise you. It'll be on We The Unicorns the next day, I swear to God. Anyway, here's the other example. I love Kylie Minogue. Kylie Minogue has recently announced a makeup brand. It look like this. I'm not wildly interested in anything that is being sold from it. It's not anything like new or groundbreaking to me. And also when the exchange rate is factored in, it's a little bit expensive for me. Does that take away from my fervent love of Kylie Minogue? It absolutely does not. Instead of using my own money to buy a physical product I might not even like, I'm going to log right the frick into Miss Spotify and I'm going to stream, get out of my way, sexy love, love at first sight, skirt, can't get you out of my head, and all the other bops and bangers that Miss Minogue has bestowed upon me and me specifically over the years. There are ways to support your faves other than handing them fistfuls of your cash. Now you might be thinking, Nisa, isn't that a little hypocritical of you to say since you've spent easily $200 buying Chanel Monet and Beyonce merch? To that I say, I can't see you, so your opinion does not matter. Janelle Monet gave me this shirt after I paid her money for it. Go ahead and stream Dirty Computer on all platforms if you haven't. Okay, by the way, everything I just said about this goes absolutely triple for YouTuber merch. YouTuber merch is such a slippery slope. One person tweets one thing and suddenly you can't wear a whole ass $39 hoodie anymore. At least not on social media. I used to have a Jason Nash demonetized hoodie pre Trisha, don't, don't at me, okay? <laughs> I like the design of the hoodie, don't at me. Don't. One afternoon, I wore that hoodie out and about in the world, and it led to like three different really awkward conversations about where I got it. I had to just sort of awkwardly tell people in the middle of Trader Joe's, it's like, uh, yeah, he's on, he's a YouTuber in the vlog squad. I had one guy who walked up to me in the produce section, he was like, what, you, what is the context of the word demonetized? I was like, I don't like when YouTube cuts your ads. Also, I held the door open for a group of old ladies going to lunch at a restaurant. One of them looked at my hoodie and she was like, Demonized? Oh dear, you're not demonized. You're a good girl. And I was like, no, uh, uh, thanks. Because like, I'm really not going to stand here and explain to this 90-year-old woman how AdSense works. I'll just let her think it says demonized and I'm like an edgy tween. YouTuber merch can get kind of awkward, but like, same situation. You don't need to shove fistfuls of cash at YouTubers in order to support them. Tana Mojo lives in a mansion and regularly spills top shelf vodka on designer shoes. She's not gonna go hungry if you resist buying a thong from her merch store that says scandalous on it in rhinestones. Trisha Paytas will still be able to film mukbangs if you choose not to give her $30 for a tacky t-shirt. Oh, did I actually not think of 10? <laughs> That's the last one, the influencer one. Oopsies. Okay, number 10, keep your expectations realistic. Businesses exist to sell product. Every decision a business makes is for the purpose of either getting you to buy things from them or fixing your perception of them so that you will buy things from them. Tart choosing to not take offense at my mean sketches about them and instead choosing to be nice to me and send me gifts was a smart business move. 
Cosmetics brands choosing to use whatever the it natural ingredient of the moment is, whether it's green tea and matcha, CBD, watermelon, cranberries, acai, or what have you, is a smart business move because somebody's probably read an article on some kind of dubious scientific site that said that that thing was healthy for them. Oh look, here comes Glow Recipe, here comes ColourPop, here comes Pure Lease throwing watermelons at your face. Well, I read one article that said watermelon essence was good for my moisture barriers. So I'm gonna buy all of this. It's smart business. The reason I'm harping on this is sometimes I see people complaining about things brands do as if brands are people who have personally slighted them by releasing another neutral palette when somebody wants a Brights palette or teaming up with an influencer somebody doesn't like because that influencer has a lot of clout and it's a smart business move. Let's say I'm the new kid in a high school, right? And I really wanna up my social capital. Jessica is very, very popular. 300 kids love Jessica, but 150 kids hate Jessica. Is it a smart social move for me to befriend Jessica? Yes, because more people like Jessica than don't like Jessica. Business is very similar. And I would know, seeing as I um, got a GRE waiver accepted for business school, so, but um, Business Inc. Expect my CV in the mail, toot sweet. Little insider secret for you. Inc. is business for incorporated. Take that to the stocks and invest it. <laughs> Just a little business joke. When brands are working with influencers, they're doing it because the influencer is a way for the brand to advertise. And I feel like people forget that brands have been doing that since before influencer marketing was a thing. It's why sports athletes Sports athletes, Nisa? God, it's why athletes are on boxes of Wheaties. Why Shaq is in Gold Bond commercials. It's why Beyonce's tour writers demand that she is only allowed to consume Pepsi brand products because of the way influencers have built up their relationships with their audiences where they start as one of us and then gradually over time, sometimes so subtly that you don't even notice it, they shift away from being one of us. People forget that it's just advertising the way advertising has already been done, and instead of seeing it as just advertising, they see it as a personal betrayal. Wait, I thought Jaclyn Hill was posting a bunch of videos because she loves me and wants to give me content. It's actually because she's about to drop a line of lipsticks. I'm not saying this to imply that everybody who finds companionship in an influencer or a YouTuber is just an idiot, <laughs> just like a, dog barking at its own reflection, not realizing it's not another dog, or to say that all influencers are cold, cash-sucking machines. I'm just saying, be realistic about what you're watching. Take everything you hear on the internet with a grain of salt. Question everything. Question what I'm telling you. Me. Little old me. Your friendly neighborhood Nisi Pisa. The people's vlogger. Or am I? Maybe I'm considering doing a declutter, but do you know why? It might be because I have PR on the way. Who knows? Am I even real anymore? Is this even my real hair? Are these even my real eyelids? I don't know. Do you know? No one knows. That's the frightening <laughs> landscape of influencer marketing. <laughs> I've got a dissertation right in here. It's just the words we live in a society over and over and over again in size 72 impact font. <laughs> Get ready business school. You got a real maverick coming. Remember how people in 2006 used to say no homo because of internalized homophobia? Can we do that for like words that YouTubers have ruined? Can I use the word maverick but just follow it up with no Logan? No logo. Dude, you're such a maverick, no logo. How often do I shred on skateboard? <laughs> it's every day, bro. No Jake Paul. Oh my God, I haven't seen you in such a long time. How are ya? No, Jeffrey. See? So anyway, those are my poorly defined tips for being a smarter consumer and taking better stock of your things. Yeah, yeah. All right, partners. Thank you so much for watching. I am very happy to have you here. Thank you for 17.2 thousand subscribers. Before you leave, I'm gonna need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me, that would be absolutely yeehaw. If you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Pisa. You can also check out my second channel where I post music and covers, my Patreon, a playlist of all of my favorite songs that I'm endlessly curating, and now there's a whole bunch of K-pop on there, so that's fun. All of those things are linked in the description. Make sure you check out Whitney Hedrick. Hedrick? I don't know. Homegirl makes some banging points. That's gonna be it, guys. Don't forget to use code NISIPISA for 10% off at your local consumerism store. Bye. I got that.